Um, this is one of the few fan cams where I don't actually have that many questions. I feel like I should, but if I'm being brutally honest, I was enjoying myself so much in the away end. I missed half of the stuff that was going on, but obviously uh, I've seen, I saw the goals. I saw great passages of play. I mean, it's great to just go on a little run, three on the trot. Yeah, it's just great to start winning games. I'm at that point where it's like, I don't really care too much about like the issues that you might have still seen because I we won't say it's the best of performances, but with the season that we've had, with the performances that we've seen, it's all really just about getting the results. Like we're now three points closer to that magic 40. Got three wins on the bounce. Players look like they're starting to get a little bit more cohesive with each other. And yeah, things look like they're improving all around. Enzo Fernandez, by the way, absolute unbelievable player. He's making 120 million look like a bargain. Um, I haven't seen passes like that since, I don't know, Prime Cesc Fabregas. That shows how long we've been starving as well. But he was unbelievable. I thought um, defensively, very solid. And we did kind of struggle a little bit at the start. Well, not the start. It was more like after we had got our first goal. And then we had the offside goal from Jao Felix. I feel like Leicester City caught us in a little bit of confusion. And towards the end of the first half, they were kind of coming on us a little bit. Their, their equaliser, I thought, like, Tepper could have done a little bit better. It does come at him as near post. I would like to see him get a hand to that. But the Havertz goal comes at the right time. It's just like the Sterling goal for Dortmund comes just before half-time, gives us a bit more confidence, um, shakes Leicester, because if they went into half-time still at 1-1, but I think they come out a bit more of a different team. But it gives us a bit more confidence, it puts them down. And the second half was a lot more controlled from us. Um, the Kovacic goal, brilliant bit of play from the team. I thought the likes of Havertz really started to cook on in that second half too. He was finding the right players. He was getting a lot more touch to the ball and he was in the right spaces. And yeah, the third goal comes in from Kovacic. Leicester City are fucked at that point. Then Root Fez gets sent off, which to be honest was massively overdue. They were kicking the shit out of our players all game. Well overdue a red card, but I think we controlled it well. The game management was good. Conor Gallagher as well off the bench. I think he's starting to find a really good role for him coming on. Um, not slowing down the game, but pushing the, t the opposition further back. I think that's a very good role for him. Yeah, whatever that is. But um, yeah, very good performance from us. I think the game management was much better in the second half. And it's just good to see us finally start winning games again. Absolutely. And just going back to Enzo Fernandez. Look, we got rid of Jorginho and there was seriously mixed reactions. And obviously Arsenal... I think we have to agree they got a great deal out of it, you know, because he is a top player, but yeah. he's also a player who has many flaws when he's not playing his best. What does Enzo Fernandez bring to Chelsea that we lacked with Jorginho, and, and, and why do you think this is such a good deal for us? It's like Jorginho, but with, I say, stronger passing, because Jorginho can play, can play a loop ball, but he plays it very weak, and it takes a long time to come back down onto the ground. His way of pass is just unbelievable. Enzo will also give you the physical side to the game that we all know Jorginho likes. Even the biggest Jorginho fan will admit that to you. And defensively, it's just a lot more solid. Now, I have been saying I would have liked to see Jorginho with Enzo because I do think we'd have been a bit more solid, but it's in the past. We're winning games. I'm not going to sit here and do these ifs, buts and maybes. Enzo and Kovacic look like they're starting to become a little bit better. And again, they grew into it. I thought the first half, Kova wasn't necessarily that good. I thought they was a little bit sloppy within the first 25, but he grew into the game. He got a lot more confident. He was making the right decisions as the game continued to progress. And I could say the same for a lot of them because that front three at the start, like it would, I saw flashes from them, but that was it. Havertz had that nice little ball to Felix. That was about all that I saw from him until the goal. Felix should have buried that chance, and he's got a habit of just hitting the woodwork. It's the third game, I think, in a row now that he's done it, and I don't know if it's just bad finishing or if it's just unlucky for him because it's a question of millimetres with him every single time, but you need that clinical edge to your game. You could have four goals right now this season. He's still stuck on one, and it's because of the woodwork. That's something that he's going to need to work on. Mudrick, I thought good um, dribbles with the ball in some phase, in other areas his touch and his decision making let him down. But he got his first assist, saved himself from the 007 memes and yeah, something for him to build on as well. But he had a goal disallowed as well. Yeah, that was just unlucky from him, but we're offside FC. It wouldn't be Chelsea if we don't have at least one goal ruled out for offside. Barely anyone was even celebrating the Havertz goal because we all thought it was offside. We're just used to it. but. We still kept pushing, we made more chances. The fact that we put the ball in the back of the net five times, even if it was offside twice, is still something that we probably should be celebrating. Hell, when's the last time we scored three goals in a game? I think it was Wolves in October? It's been ages. 
yeah, the football wasn't necessarily sustainable or anything. It's not like you see a philosophy, but I've said fuck all that because we've tried doing that and all we did was lose and draw games. We were at two wins in 17 when we were trying to play with a philosophy. Now we've gone back to the back five. We've gone into a phase of just get the goal and then just defend it. I think we look at least a little bit more solid at the back. No one really stood out in terms of having a bad performance defensively. Koulibaly was brilliant, Kukurella brilliant, Fafana and Chilwell did well against a very hostile crowd for them. Even Loftus-Cheek I thought did really well in that first half too, so it's just about building from the back and moving forward and that's exactly what we've been doing the last three games. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one as well because obviously Badi Ashil has been playing really well but with Kukurea's performances, it's, it's almost impossible to get into the squad. Yeah, um, we're the starting eleven. Yeah, with Badia Shield, it's just a victim of circumstance. I don't think it's a case of you've been dropped because your performance ain't been good enough. No one would say that. It's just Kukurea's had really bad problems with his confidence over the last few weeks. He's been taken out of the eleven as a result. You bring him back in, and he's one man of the match in his first game. You cannot drop him based on that because that sends his confidence right back down into the gutter. If you drop a ten out of ten performance and you're not rewarded with a start the next game. Cucurella deserved it. Loki, I feel like he's still holding left centre back on lock. I'd start him again in the next game, but it's got nothing to do with Badia Shield's ability. We already know what he brings. He's an aerial tank, always makes the right decisions, great on the ball, but these are the sort of headaches that you want. Like, we've had so many headaches over, oh, this guy doesn't offer anything, but this guy doesn't offer anything. Who are we going to play? Now we're saying these two are quality. Who's getting benched? It's Things nice. are looking positive. It's nice to have players fit now as well. I mean, we've seen Pulisic on the pitch. Fafana's going. Obviously, Silva's out. Out, but when you see the strength and depth we have when other players are fit, you don't miss them as much because we can defend as a unit with the extra support at the back. And I think Koulibaly's a player that's benefited from that. Kepa, we already know that he knows how to play in this system because we've done that under Tuchel. Um, it's all upwards, hopefully, but I mean, we've, we've, we've got to say that, I mean, even me, I was still nervous coming into this game and you still don't know what's going to happen because things could have been completely different with that goal being disallowed, Leicester hitting the post. I mean, we could be sitting here a completely different result, but I don't want to get negative. We did get a little bit lucky, like that Dewsbury Hall chance from about two yards out and he just completely scuffed it. There was other moments, I think Gallagher cleared one off the line in the second half. We did get a little bit lucky, but... You need luck on your side. On your side, sometimes. How many times has luck worked against us this season? This, for the first time, things are working out the right way for us. We got the retaking pen against Dortmund. We got those little moments against Leicester today. Again, it all leads into the idea that everything's moving positively for us, and we just need to keep that momentum going because for the first time in ages, we're winning games consistently. Hell, we're scoring more goals in each game, like three goals in a football match for the first time since, Oct since October. And there was another two chalked off for offside. And that's who playing five at the back. There are like negatives in some of the aspects of the way that we're playing, but this isn't the philosophy that Potter is trying to play. This is just something completely set up to get results. And that is exactly what we're doing. Just long may it continue. What's your prediction for the Everton game before we go into the international break? I mean, I'm feeling a bit more optimistic now, even with the low block from Sean Dyke. Maybe a 2-0, maybe a 2-0. I think they might be a bit of a problem for us in transition. We did see that a couple of times with Leicester in the first half as well. But I think as long as we stick to that back five, I think we could just defend anything at this point. It's yet enough. I was going to say another game for clean sheet. I forgot about the fucking um, Dakar goal. But defensively, we're still solid. We're still solid. We're barely conceding. That's the only goal we've conceded since we've gone to the back five. I can back us defensively. As long as we are solid defensively, we have a chance to win any game. Uh, just to finish it off, I'd love to know where you would rank the away support on a scale of 1 to 10. I'd say an 8, really. Like that's, a, that's the best away crowd we've been around in months. And it's again because of the performances. I know our atmosphere has been coming into question a lot this season, but I've always said, as long as the performances are good, the atmosphere will be good as a result. The fans need something to go off. And if the players are on it, the fans will be on it too. And that was shown today. We started well. The fans were on them. The likes of Chilwell and Fafana were always going to get good receptions from us. And Chilwell's first goal as well. Absolutely brilliant. And he deserved that too for all the stick that he's been getting from the last year from the Leicester fans. But yeah, brilliant away crowd. If we continue this on against Everton, the home atmosphere will be good as well. It's all just about improving the performances. And one game at a time, we're doing it. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers. No worries, bro. Oh, yeah, Ant, you wanted to do the video. Yes, sir.